Morning all. Uh, this is the first video of a series I'll put together uh, to um, help you understand who I am and what we're trying to do here. Uh, our intention is to start building a New Zealand manufactured chassis for the series range of Land Rovers. So I've got a series three short wheelbase behind me here. Um, <clears throat> and uh, whilst it's a long story, because anyone involved in this stuff, it's always a long story, and our friends and wives put up with us for some reason. Um, so just to let you know who I am, my name's Alan Booth. I run a company in Christchurch called Precision Waterjet. We've been here for about three years, but I have a long history in building cars and chassis and motorbikes and things all over the planet. And most of them have stuck together and run very well. We've won some accolades in the UK for building replicas and race cars. Uh, currently we operate this water jet machine here, uh, which is a 24 by 1200 bed. It'll cut up to a hundred mil of steel. Uh, it takes a while, but it cuts to plus or minus 0.1 mil. So it's fairly accurate and we can cut anything that you can get in the building. So ideal for helping us design and profile parts for Land Rover chassis. Uh, we, we keep a range of, you know, so we're a small workshop. It's a one-man band, pretty much. Um, I'm semi-retired. I don't know what that means, really. The more you retire, the more you find to fill up your day. And then, of course, I purchased a Land Rover. I was told, reliably, that if you have a Land Rover series, you must have another one, which is a spare parts uh, provider. I don't know what it what happens to us when you have two Land Rovers because you, you've now got the first Land Rover which needs the parts and you've got the second one. When you've acquired a third Land Rover for some unknown reason, is that two spare parts Land Rovers for the first one? Or is it now that you've got a set and a half and the third Land Rover also needs another Land Rover? So that can be parts or something. I've got eight and, and some of you have more or less. We have, I have to stop. Um, so I've dismantled this car because I was going to get it on the road, had a look at the chassis, it clearly had some issues like they all do and I decided to dismantle it and then I was shocked and surprised to find, I wasn't shocked and surprised at all, I found that the chassis is in quite a bad way. Um, no more or less rust than most of these old chassis but the way that it's been repaired or attempted to be repaired is uh, where the shock and surprise comes from. So I will show you that. Um, now the chassis uh, isn't suitable to build a jig off, but it's suitable to be a jig guide. So we're going to build a lightweight jig here. And I've got some original drawings that we've acquired with all the right dimensions. And of course we have all the parts. So we'll start building a jig and then we'll uh, figure out how best to cut and make the components and weld them up. The weld process is very important as you all know a big tough jig won't stop twist if you don't know what you're doing so we'll have to manage that and it has been suggested by someone on the forum that we consider tabbing chassis and flat packing them so that you can purchase them and uh, weld them up in your garage or something of that nature um, not a bad idea we might put the tabs on anyway because that'll help us in the assembly process it just keeps things aligned and um, you could then put it together without the need of a jig 